And so when I get a fried pie and the apples are not cooked down like Mama cooked them, I just don't like them as good. I mean, they're not big, plump, light-colored apples like you'd see in an apple pie. They're cooked down almost like a preserve because you put the sugar and the butter in them and you cook them and, until they're glazy and sticky. Hey, y'all. It's Timmy with Colored Valley Cooks. And I made some apples the first the day after we arrived here. So this morning I'm heating them up. I'm going to uh, take some of the liquid off of them. I'm going to let them simmer right here. And we're going to make up some biscuit dough and we're going to make some fried pies. Dried apples are dehydrated. So when, once you add them to your pot, they're going to swell up, okay? Like, like all the way to the top. Once they get some water in them. But what I do is I cook them down. I cook them all the way down to where they're, you know, almost translucent or however you say it and clear. And then that's how I think they're done. And I like for them to be caramelized and kind of brown looking. So I don't like for them to be like a, you know, a, a real pretty colored apple. You have an apple, an actual apple pie. I want them to be cooked down. Um, so I'm gonna boil them first, and then I'm gonna add sugar and butter, and then I'm gonna start caramelizing them and cook them down more and more, okay? I'm gonna turn the apples on high to start with, and we're gonna start boiling them up. Now, one person said, that ain't like mama did. You're using dried apples, like, you know, like they need to be fresh. And I was thinking, honey, if you had a real granny that lived in the country and had an apple tree, she peeled her apples, she laid them out on a sheet outside, and that's how she dried her apples. You can't eat a whole tree full of apples when they come in season. So real country people really did dry their apples, so they just don't know what they're talking about. It's what it amounts to. So anyway, look how pretty these are. See? They're hydrating. Sugar. Lord, I hope I have sugar. I know I got some in this coffee thing. We'll just pour it out of here. I gotta remember I'm not home, so I have to look at what, what all I'm doing. I'm gonna put about a good cup in there. And then we're gonna put um, some butter in there. About three quarters of a stick, I guess, will work. So we got the sugar in here, we got the butter in here, and all we're gonna do is cook these down. And I don't even add, mama never did, and granny never did. We don't add cinnamon and all that stuff to our apples, because uh, most country people never even use nutmeg, especially, and they use cinnamon sparingly. Now, what I like to do is make up a cinnamon sugar, and actually, once I fry the apple pie, I lay it in that cinnamon, or sprinkle it with cinnamon sugar. I like to do that, because then it's just barely enough to give a hint of cinnamon, and it's just really good. So after I, um, I pulled them off the heat the other day and left while they still had a little juice in them, okay? So that I could just cook them down the day I wanted to make the pies. Real quick, let's put some biscuits in here. The good thing about using biscuit mix, and if you can't get Southern Biscuit Formula L, I have a recipe that's my own homemade biscuit mix. The great thing is all you got to do is scoop it out, put it in your bowl. That'll probably make at least four pies, four or five pies. And all you do is add buttermilk. So, and I'm just going to add it until it's sticky. It sticks together. You still need just a little bit. And that's it for the buttermilk. We can put it up. So anyway, let's dust our surface and get this out on it. Now, you know that if you don't want to go through this, which I don't know why everybody acts like it's such trouble, but you can use a canned biscuit, you can use the pie, the refrigerated pie dough out of the refrigerated section, but they won't be like mine if you do. I'll tell you that right now. Nothing's better than biscuit dough for a fried pie. Okay. That makes sense. Right. So, I am going to set this to the side and then we're gonna get out our rolling pin and we're gonna roll this dough.
because now typically I'll use the end of the bottom of my sifter at home. I got an old fashioned crank sifter. You can just use the bottom. And you see that every time you see one of my videos. But this little thing, I can't do that with. So I've actually got to find something to cut out a circle with. So I'm going to use this. I don't want them to be real big. So I want to be able to get several in my skillet at one time for y'all. Okay, so there's our pie doughs. Now, you can, uh, if you think, you want them to be pretty thin. You don't want them to be real fat, because if they are, then they'll swell up and be real thick and not be as good. So you can actually, once you cut out that round circle, flatten it out a little bit more if you want to, like that. And you can't put much in there. Like, that's way too much. Or you won't be able to close it. I might can close that over there. And you just flip it over like that and crimp the edges with your fork. Put your fork down in your uh, flour. And that's it. Just like that. So we got one made, okay? So since we have one made, I'm going to reach over here. I'm going to turn our oil up. Not as stiff as a dumpling. So but it's almost like you want it pretty thin and if I hold it up it would probably if I kept holding it it would tear and a dumpling's not supposed to tear when you hold it up um, it's really close to the consistency of a dumpling really it is And drop, make one and then drop another one. You need to drop them all in the oil at the same time. And your oil don't need to be too hot either. Let me check on mine. It's all five, y'all. And y'all know me with this electric. I guess that's a good number. Let's put these apples in this one. If you mess up, just fix it like I do. You ain't got to use that dough. I mean, it's dough, it's cheap. It ain't expensive. <laughs> and they say good press. Yeah. Go over what you do with your apples again, so because some people sure didn't see okay. that. Now we're going to put some um, oil in the skillet. I mean, butter in the oil. I like butter in my uh, frying oil when I fry fried pies because it tastes good. And don't put margarine down in there because if you do, it will pop you like crazy because margarine is full of water. Okay? Anytime, every single time I try to fry something for y'all or make something and I do it live, I mess something up. That should tell you how hard it was to do that show. I like that butter burn. That should tell you uh, how hard it was to do that show, y'all. If I get nervous Oh, when I'm cooking for y'all, and I don't do it all the time, but sometimes I do. Um, just think of how it was on that show. I don't really get nervous, but when I'm live, I don't cook. Really, I don't cook near as good as I would if I, if I weren't on live. Because I have to talk, and I get um, distracted, and it's just different. Y'all should try it sometimes. Really, all you're doing is cooking the dough. So you can tell they're already turning brown uh, because my grease was nice and hot. Ugh. Chris, can you please hand me that spoon right quick before I screw this up too? The big one. And my camera's in my way. <laughs> This is a little bitty kitchen, y'all. All right. Really, when you flip them, the round part needs to be in line with the skillet so that they'll all fit in the skillet. See that? What I mean? The round side. And so sometimes you just got to, you know, 
move stuff around a little. This is my last flip. So you need to flip it so that the round part is against the wall of the skillet. That makes sense. If you do, then they all fit in there nice. And yes, I crowded them, but they'll be fine. So once they come up, um, it only takes a second to make them. And that's why you want to drop them all at the same time. So you're going to lay them out on, your, uh, pa on a paper towel, okay? And now I'm going to make some cinnamon sugar real fast and sprinkle them while they're still hot. You want them to be sprinkled while they're hot because if you sprinkle them while they're hot, uh, it'll stick to them better. You want them, they're going to taste like heaven. Don't matter how pretty they are when you're eating them yourself, does it? All right, that's it. There's all there, that's all there is to it. Look at there. And let's get over here and make some cinnamon sugar. I love this new Oreos creamer. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And look when it comes out, it looks like it's dark like Oreo cookies. Yummy. That's why lots of times instead of dessert in the evening, I just have a cup of coffee like this, and that's my dessert. It's even it's even uh, cooler if you put the Cool Whip on the top. You know, like the squeeze out kind. Let's cut the ugliest one, okay? We'll cut the ugliest one because I won't take a picture of it. <laughs> it's nice and crunchy. And then it's got the apples on the inside. Now, a lot of people don't cook their apples down like I do. You can, you can I mean, y'all seen my apples. But Mama did. And so when I get a fried pie and the apples are not cooked down like Mama cooked them, I just don't like them as good, okay? It's nothing like, um, I mean, they're not big, plump, light-colored apples like you'd see in an apple pie. They're cooked down almost like a preserve because you put the sugar and the butter in them and you cook them in, until they're glazy and sticky, like apple preserves. I mean, you could, you could cook them like that and have them with breakfast. And just put them in a jar on the table. Oh my goodness, there's nothing better, y'all, than a fried apple pie. Now, my family would never put the cinnamon sugar on it, but I love it. And it's nice and crunchy around the edges. So, I hope that y'all enjoyed, even with me being kind of crazy this morning, um, having these apple pies this morning. But, Y'all have a blessed day, and thanks for watching Color Valley Cooks, where we cook a lot, Mama did. Bye, y'all.